getting everyone situated, set up, dialed in, completely up to you. We know that the time right now could be a busy time. So if you'd like to join by video, don't leave us alone. But if you need to keep it off, we completely understand. And it's uh, streaming live on YouTube. Nice. That silenced the Zoom room, Neha. <laughs> yeah, I, I like to add, right, like, you know, another new skill that we learn is, uh, yeah, uh, Zoom, Zoom breakout room. So that, yes. <laughs> the COVID learning. <laughs> yeah, Zoom, Zoom, Zoom during pandemic. Okay, it's... Uh... <clears throat> I think we should get started now. For sure. And Jeff, are you ready? Okay, so, the stream and hitting yeah, up. so yeah, I'll share my screen. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, welcome everybody um, to, to our uh, <coughs> Biotech Week event. The future of biotech challenges and opportunities. We have a great event plan today. My name is David Layton. Before I turn it over to Neha and the team speaking, just want to tell you a little bit about Witty. Um, so everything's on WITI.com. I know it's been a long day for everybody. We have amazing well-being courses. One I just want to point out that we started yes on uh, Monday of this week, yesterday. All the days we come together in our COVID times. We are doing um, yoga nidra every other week. So if you haven't done Yoga Nidra before, it's really great, just relaxing. I have a session I do every Tuesday afternoon I just came off of. So it's, it's great to build energy. We have things to, programs to learn better leadership skills, technology training, events like this. So let me turn it over to Nihon first. Thank her so much um, for pulling all this together for us. Neha, your screen went black. I hope that you're still able to hear. How about now? Can you see my screen now? Yes, we can see it. No, it's more the okay. video than it. Is. Yeah, the screen. Okay, good. great, great. Um, we do have yes. two more biotech events coming up that Neha put on the screen. And go ahead, Neha. Let me turn it over to you. Okay, great, great. Thank you, David, and welcome everyone. We are excited to have you all in our biotech week. So this week and next, we are celebrating biotech weeks, and it's, this is to show gratitude to the professionals working in biotech who are working hard to make our lives healthier, to make us healthier. So we have several events. Our first event is today, which is uh, going to start now. Next event is on September 24th, Thursday, where we'll talk about diversity, innovation, and career opportunities. And I'm hearing some echo. If you can put yourself on mute. Some background noise. Yeah, yeah, now it's good. And then uh, next week on Thursday, we'll have global networking of biotech professionals. And again, this is our uh, panel for today, and it's my pleasure to introduce Bindu, Bindu Garapati, who is the Director of Talent Development and Inclusion at Gilead Sciences. She leads global mentoring and coaching program and serves as organizational development consultant in talent development and inclusion. So she has a doctorate degree in clinical psychology and entrepreneurial spirit. She is the co-founder and CEO of The Happy Leader, Wonderful. She infuses evidence-based practices and lessons learned from her leadership experience to help leaders find their intersection of happiness, meaning, and impact. And that's what we were discussing right before this session, that that's so much needed now is uh, self-reflection and finding where that intersection is. So it's, I'm delighted to welcome Bindu now, and Bindu, over to you. Bindu, you'll need to take your other. You're, you're muted. You're muted. You're yeah. Muted on. 
another line. Okay, so I'll stop sharing now. Well, Jeff, you should, can you make me the co-host please? Bindu, it might be that you muted it on the application. Can you guys hear me? Now you're good. Yes. Okay, great. Oh, I had a, such a great intro. I've got to start all over. <laughs> so um, Neha and David, thank you so much. We're very grateful for the work that Witty does. What I was saying earlier while I was muted is that we know how much work goes into the virtual events and the importance in terms of what we need to be holding us together, especially as we look at the future of biotech and the challenges and opportunities ahead of us. So I am so honored to be part of and welcome this panel to hear all of the insightful things that they have to say as we look at the future of biotech. So let me start out in this way. We have with us someone who has a superpower who has actually impacted over 150,000 lives. So with that, I'm going to ask Rohit to share a little bit more about why that's his superpower and a little bit about who he is, and then we'll move on from there. All right. Thank you, um, Bindu. I, I don't know if I would consider myself that superpower or, or yes, the company has done a great job. Um, you know, people who know a little bit about, uh, you know, folks from the subcontinent, from India, uh, they would know that uh, usually we are, uh, you know, our, our border, uh, the, the boundary uh, line which is drawn by our parents uh, when we grew up out there is either become an engineer or become a doctor. Uh, and when we, people used to ask me as a kid, you know, what do you want to become? I, I used to say a doctor. Um, well, I, I didn't become a doctor. I, I became an engineer, but I'm, I'm glad that I was able to impact 150,000 uh, lives uh, who are uh, patients who are suffering from late stage cancer. Uh, through our company, uh, Garden Health. Uh, we are a liquid biopsy uh, company who are um, helping people manage cancer. And um, I'm, I'm glad to be part of this esteemed uh, you know, panelist. Thank you again uh, for, that, uh, for that intro. So what I've done, uh, I've, I've done my uh, supply chain uh, or uh, industrial engineering, uh, you know, bachelor's in industrial and then uh, master's in supply chain from Arizona State. And um, I've actually been part of high tech uh, and semiconductor uh, before getting into biotech. So um, hopefully I'll, I'll be able to share my experience, how I entered the biotech world and, and um, how it is so different from the high tech uh, and the other, uh, you know, uh, industries uh, when, when you get into the biotech and, and you need to uh, understand the jargons uh, of, this, of this unique industry. Um, but yeah, if I, I can continue on, but you know, I don't want to take the entire time. Uh, I have, we have some amazing other panelists uh, who, who would love to share their experiences. Absolutely. So next superpower we have is a leader who takes great pride in guessing the ending of movies. Ashley, tell us a little bit about you. Hi, thank you, Bindu. I definitely got to test that superpower a lot more doing shelter in place, I have to say. But it's such an honor to be here as well. Um, I started in the biotech industry about seven years ago, uh, first as a process engineer developing fermentation and purification processes. And then I transitioned into technical project and program management, really working closely with our external contract manufacturers and partners to transfer and then scale up those same processes. Um, I'm currently at Bolt Threads, which is a startup based in Emeryville, California, um, here in the Bay Area. And um, ultimately what we are is a material solutions company that takes inspiration from nature. And through biotechnology, we invent and scale advanced credible materials that we really hope will put us on a path to a more sustainable future. Um, some of these materials are um, a vegan mushroom leather and also a vegan silk. So um, definitely a very interesting and exciting application of biotech there. And I really I can't wait to learn from and hear from everyone um, during this session. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Ashley. You're going to have to share uh, what your favorite movie was and how you picked the ending to that one. 
So last but not least, we have a leader whose superpower is her ability to read a room. Karen, share with us. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Um, so my superpower definitely is being able to identify the unspoken issue in a room um, or identify an area that needs to um, need to be uh, encouraged to speak up and find their voice. Um, so I, I definitely try to empower our, our folks to be able to find their voice, uh, be their voice when they haven't found it yet. But really from um, Genentech and as a member of the Roche group, one of the things we do from an informatics perspective is support, of course, all of our uh, business colleagues with all of their informatics needs. And so as part of that, you know, coming into biotech from an outside industry six years ago, you know, understanding the landscape um, and identifying where there's challenges and potential issues, um, finding those dominant voices and helping them kind of quiet down sometimes and then finding those unspoken heroes that really need to identify uh, or find their language right within biotech because it can be such a unique language that people need to learn. Um, but coming uh, from an industry of, you know, uh, you know, discipline of project and program management for 20 years, um, being able to really find the right way to, to not only implement something, but really promoting adoption. And, and by using that superpower, really uh, uncovering the, the diamonds that really need to be um, harnessed out. And so I'm very excited to be here and I'm excited to be part of this team. So thanks for having me. Excellent. You're fine tuning those reading the room uh, skills to Zoom room, right? So <laughs> exactly. It's a little bit more challenging. <laughs> but yes. Well, thank thank you all so much. You got a little bit of insight into who we're going to be speaking to today. So let me set the context in the stage for today. Biotech, as well as many other companies, are really faced with significant challenges ranging from legislation to privacy to how do we compartmentalize or even separate that transition between work and life? How do we support our greatest assets, which we all know is our talent? So I'm gonna ask each of you, Ashley, I'll start with you. How has the pandemic really impacted the industry? One, as an employee, and then how you see that playing out um, as from an employer's lens? Oh, absolutely. It's been huge, right? I think one of the biggest things is it's really a test in resilience and in managing as human beings, our energy levels throughout, you know, days that can feel like they're never ending. And really a reminder um, of how important the human connection is, not only for our own gratification outside and inside of work, but as a means of, you know, natural spontaneous inspiration and communication and advancement of projects and, you know, um, how it really is so important to just maybe turn around and say, hey, how's that going? What did you learn from that? And how, and how uh, or organic that can be before and finding ways now to facilitate those moments um, whether without maybe bogging down the day with all these different zoom meetings instead what can we do instead that maybe small moments that here and there to still encourage those um, means of connection and communication so that that's one area I see are there specific things that your company has done to help ease the burden of all the stresses related to working in a pandemic? Yes, there's been quite a few things. They, my company, um, as a small startup, is really great about trying to inject fun uh, moments into the work weeks. Uh, we'll do spontaneous trivia games where they'll have to offline kind of figure out, oh, who's this person that fits this certain category? We also have a way to kind of celebrate the little wins and the little moments that often get you know, forgotten about if you're not really connecting on a day-to-day -day basis. So we really leverage Slack in that means. So we have a specific channel where um, people can then call out other folks for little wins that they're seeing them contribute to the team um, in that way. So it really helps support morale and it helps, you know, make sure that uh, people are getting acknowledged and their contributions are being recognized even if we're not seeing each other on a day-to-day. It really challenges our abilities, doesn't it, to multitask and to be able to leverage all those tools and techniques. I, I'm hearing Slack is like Zooming. It's like Starbucksing. So all of a sudden, these IT resources and supports have turned into verbs for us. Uh, Karen, what about you? How has the pandemic really impacted the industry from your lens and where you sit? Um, well, you know, having a, an organization that is 190,000 employees trying to, you know, shift that into a virtual space 
pretty much overnight um, was a huge undertaking. I think that, you know, with a lot of the strategic planning and investment that already had been done in the past really helped geared us for that. But really it was also um, helping team members figure out how to do this virtually. As you know, Ashley was just mentioning, you know, it's easy to turn around and have a conversation with somebody, you know, in the cafe or at a coffee machine. But when you're dealing with situations where, you know, people who are commonly working or co-located together, to really broaden that out, it's um, also changing the mindset, right? Being able to know that it's okay um, that we need to take a break and it's okay to have 45 minute meetings and it's okay to, to walk away and not to have back to back and, and really making sure that the behaviors and mindset were really um, established and creating the new norm, right? I think that uh, where we have a situation where you're already a global company, um, being able to do virtual connections was already kind of part of the norm. So it wasn't too much of a leap, but for the folks who really um, had more of their day-to-day, -day, you know, in and out of the office and really didn't have team members that they dealt with, you know, remotely was a, a shift. It was a real mental shift for them. Um, so really um, helping the team establish new norms, helping the team establish performance, you know, metrics, because there was also some concerns, you know, you're unseen. Um, so how does your performance get measured? Um, and then also just really making sure that um, communication lines were wide open, um, all the way from our senior executives, um, all the way through line managers, really making sure that people were being taken care of and made sure they were okay. Absolutely. No, I think performance is such a key piece in terms of how people are thinking about the impact in addition to, wait a second, we're challenging a way of working like we've never done before in terms of, you know, I know that there are companies out there that um, try to have flexible work from anywhere policies or work from home. And now we've all been put on this level playing field for all of us to work from home. What does a hybrid look like when we have to return back? And will that even be a hybrid? Rohit, you know, with your supply chain background, what other challenges do you start to see? So we've talked about talent, we've talked about that face-to-face, -face, that sense of well-being and connection in the office. Provide another perspective on what are some of the challenges in biotech specifically. Sure, I think the uh, a, a big challenge for us at the beginning, uh, you know, we we are an oncology company. Uh, we are one of the leaders in the in the liquid biopsy world, um, and. and um, we have many products in, in you know out there in the market, and and one of our uh, flagship product is a, a late stage cancer uh, product. And uh, the the patients we are dealing with, uh, you know, have a few weeks to a few months to live, uh, you know, based on the on the initial uh, doctors, you know, uh, you know, analysis or, or whatever um, information they have at the time uh, before they take our, our the garden test. Um, and, and so there was there, there was never an option that we can shut down. So we were very at the at the very beginning, uh, we were one of the essential services which had to be uh, kept open. And I remember there was uh, when Baybridge uh, was being inaugurated, uh, the the makers of the Baybridge had said, uh, you know, this is an earthquake uh, zone, and and so if there is ever an earthquake, I would rather be on the Baybridge than any other place in in the in California. And, and I feel the same way about our, our lab now, our, our headquarters. Uh, I would rather be inside the headquarter uh, while this pandemic is going because the, the team has done such a phenomenal job, you know, keeping everything clean and, and, and um, uh, you know, uh, the, the operations is still going on. I, of, you know, obviously uh, not more than 25% people are allowed to work, the essential uh, folks who have to be at work. And I, uh, uh, you know, from time to time do go to work. Um, you know, I, I spend a, a few days uh, a week uh, at work. But uh, outside of, of work and outside of, of providing these facilities, uh, we have seen, uh, and I'm sure as the same, uh, you know, uh, emotion across the board for all supply chain folks, we, we are seeing an unprecedented time uh, where uh, the COVID tests are, are ramping up um, and we are competing uh, for the same components, for the same supply chain. Uh, for our oncology test for, I'm sure there's a, there's a lot of other pharmaceutical companies who are probably competing for the same components. And, uh, and, and I wish there was a way to prioritize, you know, prioritize who gets the, the first uh, uh, say on, on what goes where. Because um, 
there's there's people who don't have many months to live. I, you know, I, I would rather give uh, some piece or, or some allocation to them uh, than the COVID tests. Of course, everything's important. Uh, and, and I think that's the biggest challenge in the biotech world right now. Uh, there's limited supply, there's limited uh, resources uh, available across the supply chain. And um, how that is being distributed uh, sometimes could be unfair to some people uh, at the end of the supply chain. Yeah, and those conversations, we hear about them, right, in the media, we hear them about them politically, on the ground floor, among executives and leaders at all different levels, and there isn't that understanding of how it all works, because guess what, we're all trying to figure it out, right? This is yeah, the first yeah. time for everybody here, so, so thank you so much for that. Hopefully, all the participants, you get a sense of our panelists, so I really want to invite you and welcome you to ask to be unmuted or leverage the chat to ask questions, personal questions that may be burning that you would like to specifically ask, because I probably won't get them all. But as we prep you and prime you to be able to do that, Neha, I'm going to reach out to you to help support and read the chat. My multitasking skills and abilities this late in the day can get lost, so I don't want to miss any important chats that come up. Um, but as we're waiting for you guys to think of questions to share and to ask, since you have this panel here um, easily available. Karen, when we were prepping for this call, we were talking a lot about talent and what that looks like. What do you see as kind of the future skills required, especially in the biotech space, when we look at where we're sitting right now, this culture of work from anywhere, if you will, really accelerating, um, you know, leadership skills and abilities. What do you think are some of the key aspects that we need to be looking for for the future when it comes to talent? Absolutely. I think um, quite a few of the things come to mind um, where I think that, you know, first of all, I think one of the misconceptions is, is that biotech needs to come from biotech, right? That all the folks that need to come from the industry are, are, are going to be the right roles. Sometimes infusing those outside influences in and bringing in some of the new blood, I think, is also really important. So that's one of the misconceptions that I think we first need to break, right? Um, of course, from a scientist and R&D perspective, we definitely want to keep that in, in check. But, you know, holistically, you know, moving forward, I think that it's going to be really understanding what's the driving forces, understanding what's the strategic need of the organization and the outside influences. I think we need to constantly, you know, be on the lookout of the external influences, whether it's regulations or things like that. But internally, from a leadership perspective, I think it's really staying focused on um, prioritizing, really staying focused on what matters, um, ability to have those difficult conversations to be able to say, you know, um, no, maybe not right now. Uh, maybe that's a, it's a great idea, but maybe we need to move that forward at a different time. And I think it's also a matter of being able to um, challenge what's existing today. Um, I think that's also mm -hmm. something that, you know, just because it's always been done that way, or it's been a really good um, success pattern in the past, this doesn't necessarily mean that's what's going to bring us in the future, especially working from a, you know, such a diverse environment now where this work from home, work remote, work from anywhere has really opened up the door um, to a lot of different talent, a lot of different opportunities and avenues that where geographical mm -hmm. locations may not have been feasible. And now that that I that's shattered, right? And also really making Absolutely. sure we're clear about what we're trying to achieve. You know, I think that, you know, specifically at Roche and at Genentech, you know, one of the things that we're striving for is really making sure we're reducing the cost of medicines, right? Really making sure that's an emphasis and everything we do has to support that, right? We can't have these offshoot ideas. So I think that's um, really being making sure we're prioritizing. And again, it all goes back to speaking up and making sure we're being vocal and providing feedback to one another. Well, you know, I've, I've heard from many people, you know, the Zoom situation um, or just video conferencing in general is really challenged introverts and extroverts, right? Yes. And it's many introverts have said, I love this. I can invite people into my own living room and I only have three or four people. And the extroverts are like, look at my big screen. This is amazing. I can invite hundreds of people just to have coffee or happy hour. So, Rohit, when you think about again challenges when we come to, when it, when you think about leadership, you know, Karen made some really good points about you know the emotional intelligence, the readiness, really looking and having that diversity of thought. What else would you add to that? So, I, I think Karen and I and I uh, share the same thing. We were both from outside the biotech industry, and and we uh, uh, you know 
for me, it's been 10 years. I, I've actually, uh, you know, gotten into the, the biotech industry. It's, it's been a, a, a very, um, it's a learning experience, I, I would say. Um, and I completely agree. I think, I think definitely we need to infuse this new blood, this blood from outside the biotech uh, industry. I, I do see from time to time, uh, including myself, actually, we do have some bias. Uh, to you know, hire people from within the industry because they understand the language, they understand what it you know what it takes to be successful in the in the biotech world. But from time to time, we've actually also tried uh, you know something outside uh, of biotech. I think one <clears throat> one big thing I've I've noticed uh, in the last uh, five and a half plus years that in the current company I've been in, you know, I I was one of the first fifty employees in the in the company. We're not that big. We're not the Genetech tech uh, yet. Uh, hopefully, we will be one day. But uh, you know, we're, we're close to a thousand people now and, you know, we're, we're valued more than $10 billion. And so it's been a, you know, decent growth in five years and, um, you know, going from 50 to thousand, uh, we still have more than 200 open recs. Uh, and so we're constantly looking for, for new talent. Um, and I think the, the one big learning for, for me, uh, compared to the high tech industry to now is high tech, we would never say no to anything. Whatever you know, job comes, we'll take it because our capacity was humongous and, and our, uh, we were always hungry for, for more work. In the biotech, we, uh, I have now learned how to say no. Uh, I, I've seen my, my founders are laser focused on what they wanna do, what is strategic to the company. Uh, biotech, there's so much work that you need to learn and you need to know what to say yes to and, and what to say no to. Uh, and you have to always look at the five year out strategy. I think that's that's unique about this uh, industry. And and I think, um, you know, what we always look for is talent who can actually, uh, you know, uh, be uh, with us with this with this same uh, strategy, with the same focus and, you know, um, and get us to the next level. I think um, the, the other thing, I, the reason why I've, I've stayed with the company so far uh, has been this constant learning every year. Uh, there is something new to learn. Uh, it's an ever evolving, uh, you know, industry. Uh, I mean, we've already seen this year what you know what has uh, what has been challenges to biotech world uh, with COVID, you know, pre-COVID, uh, you know, uh, post-COVID situation. So um, there is no uh, lack of learning, uh, and, and I think if if there are people out there who are interested in in this constant learning, uh, and I think this is the field or industry to be in. Absolutely. No, this is a year of curiosity. And thank you so much for bringing that perspective in terms of your different background and how that's been able to contribute to your success in moving forward, right? That we talk a lot about resiliency, grit, learning curve. Um, Ashley, so, you know, Rohit and Karen both mentioned learning, laser focus, kind of outside in, agility, curiosity. What do you see unique, especially when you think about an intergenerational workforce? Yes, I would have to say one of those things that has been so paramount is the active encouragement and solicitation and also giving a feedback. Um, like a lot of, you know, we have mentioned today, it's, this is so new territory for so many of us and you really just kind of have to go along and see how things are working and test it out. And I've been really proud of our leadership for asking for feedback in through surveys, you know, uh, anonymous surveys through open channels, encouraging, you know, discussions around, you know, current event topics as well, checking in on people's well-being in that way too, and how that could be affecting the way that we do things as an organization too. So, you know, what I love is that generationally, there are so many different thought points and points of views and backgrounds and um, having that forum to share that. And like Karen and Rohit both mentioned, the way that you can actually then pose questions and pose suggestions and have that be heard, I feel like is extremely valuable. Um, and just to also agree with you both completely about, you know, I, I've seen so many people be so successful through um, bringing in their outside perspective from working in retail or at Starbucks because they learn different types of operational efficiencies that they can then, you know, leverage in the biotech industry. And so and that has also been very and encouraging and really inspiring to see on my side. Wonderful. Oh my goodness. Uh, the chat is, is getting heavy here. So let me, let me run through this. Thank you guys all so much. Just something to add. It, it's so funny bringing in those diverse perspectives. I come from an academic healthcare background. So whenever I see API, I think, you know, academic performance index, Asian Pacific Islander. I worked in technology for a while. I was like application programming interface. 
you know, I come to Gilead and I'm like, API, active pharmaceutical ingredient. So that learning curve really takes a toll in terms of how you're able to bring that diverse perspective, but also integrate and having those amazing mentors and coaches that help you to grow along the way. So let me let me scroll through some of these questions here. Um, and I'm going to leave this open to any one of you guys on the panel that would like to answer this. What has changed about how performance gets measured and why? And what aspects, if any, are really unique to biotech? I, I can, yeah. oh, Karen, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead, Rohit, go ahead. No, I, I think the uh, what's unique about biotech, uh, I think especially, uh, you know, biotech itself is such a you know huge you know huge field right i mean i for me uh, i i switched or transitioned from semiconductor to uh, uh, to medical device company uh, which was uh, you know illumina uh, before before garden health and then uh, and then i switched to a diagnostic lab uh, which is which is garden health and you know from the outside uh, perspective when i first uh, you know got to this company I, you know i was thinking wow this is operationally fairly, you know, straightforward. I've, I've, you know, managed so many uh, more complex projects. Uh, but I think the complexity uh, is, uh, is is how uh, this has to be done in a regulated, in a highly regulated world. I think the regulatory uh, needs and, and requirements, you know, be it FDA, be it CLIA, I think that makes biotech really uh, unique. And, um, and, and understanding how all this works, uh, I, you know, we actually briefly talked about this in, a, in an earlier session. Uh, I, I wish there was a, as there was some coursework out there, some YouTube video, which will teach you all this, uh, but that's a, there's, I don't think there's any available. Uh, but I think what, what you need is a, is, is a one mentor uh, or a few mentors uh, who can actually teach you and, and uh, walk you uh, or, or you can shadow them uh, to learn about these jargons. I think that's the, that's my uh, two cents. Please go ahead, uh, Karen. I'm sure you had more. Points. Oh no, ab absolutely. I mean, I, everything you said was exactly spot on. And just to add um, another layer to that is also from a performance perspective. I think you know there is expectations set on early um, through this is that you know we have a, div a very diverse workforce, right? We have um, working parents, we have single parents, um, you know, partners that are just trying to keep things afloat in their lives, right? And so not everybody can contribute to the same level, maybe pre pre COVID as post COVID. So really taking a good look at that and having open conversations with managers, um, you know, with your line manager, really having a, a good understanding and, and it provided an opportunity for employees to be vulnerable and it provided an opportunity for managers to have empathy. Um, so, and I also think it really moved the needle um, from an organizational perspective that, um, you know, performance is not done on an annual basis. Performance is done throughout the year. Um, performance is done through a continuous feedback. And I think it just re-emphasized, you know, that agile transformation of those best practices of keeping those feedbacks and lines of communication wide open. Oh, thank you so much for that. There seem to be such good questions coming through in the chat. Um, I see some things, uh, statements from Winifred. I wanna encourage you all, we're gonna be breaking out into breakout sessions in a few minutes. Um, take those questions with you. And what I encourage you to do is continue and have the conversation and the dialogue around what specific challenges and opportunities are you experiencing in your own workspace? And use this as a mind share opportunity to learn from your colleagues, build those relationships, maybe find those mentors that Rohit had alluded to, to be able to do that. Now, I have one mental cognitive challenge for you. When you get into your breakout session, I want the person with the latest birthday to start and then work in that order. We'll see you in about uh, 10 minutes. So, in oh, yeah, sorry. You should see the button up here and you can join the breakout room. And Bindu, you can just ignore it if you'd like, or I can put you in the breakout room, whatever you'd prefer. Laura, you're able to hear me, right? Oh, yeah. I was struggling. I was struggling. Hi, Dan. Hey, Hey, guys. Okay, joining me now. Thanks.
<laughs> That's a really good color on you, Dave. Thank you. The purple, the purple. Lavender, I like it. <laughs> Thank you. Now, if you're unable to get into a breakout room, just let me know. Laura, I did assign you and Hale too and Kathy. All right, I'm going to... Oh, 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 Bindu's, hold on. Bindu's voice went somewhere else. Let me... Valentina. I think, you know, Bindu, what happens is it automatically takes your voice. I couldn't... And now I can't automatically push it back, so... I mean, let's see if I can. Yeah, I don't know if there's a way for me to get you out of there. So, but if you do want to talk, you can hang up and dial back in. Because you're, yeah, your voice is in the other room. I'll go, I can go in there and talk to you. Kathy, hello. Laura, if somebody needs me in the lobby, call me. Dave, are you looking at my chats? Oh, no, I'm not. Yes, we should. Thank you, Jeff. Maria's coming back in. Who is? Maria. I'm going to need you to do it.